guys want to take a few questions? Sure, yeah. Okay, we're going to have some questions from the audience. We're going to have some questions from Twitter. Um, Justin said that he thought it was interesting that there are cast pairings that we don't often see in the series. Kirk and Chekhov in this film. You guys find yourselves split up for a time in smaller groups. Um, what was that like? I think it's great. You know, the first couple of films were really about, at least for, for uh, Kirk, his relationship with Spock and, and, and that pairing. And, and in this film, these two definitely get a chance to suss out their relationship and I get to, to um, tour the galaxy with uh, little Anton. Bones, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it like to spend some time with Spock? Uh, I think it's one of the, the wonderful things about what we do in this picture is um, not only are we honoring the legacy of all the fantastic uh, Star Trek that has been before, but we're actually exploring new territory, and that's what's going to make it uh, so exciting. In fact, that, that, that Bones and Spock get to spend so much time together and uh, come to a, a deeper understanding, as it were, I think it's going to be uh, a real treasure for an audience. These are two characters who are historically pretty magically opposed, so, um, you know, there's, I think, also a lot of humor that comes from that, and a lot of, uh, uh, like Carl said, a lot of, a lot of depth, and, and, uh, and I think they really do finish this film with a, a deeper appreciation for one another than when they started it. I, would say. Absolutely. I don't know if you feel like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how about a question from the audience? We have microphones around. Does anyone have a question? Come on over here. Yes. Uh, the microphone's coming over. I like this shit. So, <laughs> so we just got the kind of news that the movie's going to screen at Comic Con. Yeah. Are you guys going? I haven't gotten an invitation. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Comic Con's full of disease and danger at the darkness of silence. Carl, if you want to go in my dread costume, you can wear that to Comic Con. I would like that. Alright, we'll work it out. Um, what is your. Oh, this comes from Twitter. Uh, we don't have a Twitter handle. Oh yes, Kevin Cole 14 says, "What is your favorite part of filming? Part? What is your favorite part of filming and favorite part about the films in general?" Zach, uh, I mean, hands down, my favorite part of filming these movies is getting to spend all my time with these people who are incredible, and you know, it keeps being brought up that we've been doing this for almost 10 years, which is kind of unfathomable. But it was 2007 when we made the first movie, and uh, and it just, you know. We are truly a family to one another, and even though we only get to work together every few years, we stay in touch and we stay connected, and, uh, and these are people that will be in my life for the rest of it. And, and that, to me, is, is easily the best part about, uh, about the experience, my friendship. Carl, does Bones find himself, the people who went back, would you like to answer the Twitter question? Sure. Go ahead. The one that he just answered? Sure. Uh, I think for me, um, the really cool thing about uh, us making this picture in Vancouver, the other two uh, pictures were, were shot here in Los Angeles, and all the LA-based cast had their social networks, but this was like a fraternity. We were all we were staying out. We were forced to hang out with each other. And there was just so much love. You know, we were a big guy. Uh, so I feel like we, uh, we all grew a, a lot closer, we came tighter as a group, and I think that, that you're going to see that on the screen. I also say, I have a myth to bust here. I've heard, yeah, I'm still going to do it freelance. I have, oh, don't get too excited, I'm not blowing anything up. I, I have heard that movie stars are supposed to be short. I've heard they're all standing on Apple boxes, and all three of these guys are like giants. They're like six one six two. The interest isn't even here, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I bust it. All right. Good. Carl, does Bones find himself in any uncomfortable situations at this film? Well, yes, he finds himself uh, uh, crash landed on a planet with Spock. <laughs> I mean, talk about a nightmare scenario. Um, yeah, he is out of comfort. So much fun. Um, we have a second uh, Twitter question coming up. If you could play 
Another character of Star Trek films or shows, who would you choose? This is from Black Mirror's Chris. I'm going to play Evil Kirk. <laughs> Something that someone you didn't really know. 
know. So uh, the pressure was almost uh, unbearable, I think. Um, and in this one, I think he's turned the corner and he's realizing now, as a man who's dealt with those issues, who is he as his own man? I mean, what is it like to be the captain of the starship and to captain these people without, um, without needing to burden himself with that legacy? And in that new space, that there's a lot of freedom there. I'm thinking about what he really want to do, what he to be, what he to be, and, uh, and then the drama and the suits and stuff happens. But uh, that, that, I think, is where we find the perfect in the end. Cool. And I think Scott is similarly trying to figure out his path. I mean, as everybody remembers from the first film of uh, our reboot, you know, his planet was destroyed. And I think he's really torn between his allegiance to. Um, rebuilding his race and his allegiance to the Federation and Starfleet. And, uh, and I think that Kirk and Spock rely on each other a lot for guidance through those tough moments. They don't really necessarily have that um, in, in this film. So they, they both, I think, arrive at an understanding of who they are as individuals um, in, a, in an interesting way. Because they're not together, they don't have each other to rely on. Yeah. Uh, we have another Twitter question. Uh, this movie is more fun or more dark than the last two? Again, from Blackmare as well. Wow, Blackmare is really good at asking questions. <laughs> uh, for me, it's always this film, the most fun I have on this film is having fun. And um, I think this, the tone of this film is definitely in the vein of what we did in the first, which was kind of fun topic, which has great pathos, and a great storyline, some great action, we, we like to have fun. It's not the super broad of the Marvel, it's not meta, it's just fun. It's, yeah. uh, and that's why we all like to make each other laugh with Simon Bond, you know, with his pen in the background, giving us with the singers and whatnot. But, uh, we have a blast, and I think you'll see that in this film. Justin was talking about the, the incredible fantasy of getting to direct Star Trek, being in love with it since he was a kid. And every little boy spends their childhood running around pretending they're a superhero and shooting and hiding behind stuff. But you guys actually do this for a living in movies like this. Are there times when you're on set where you're like, oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely, any time you're on a bridge of the Enterprise and there's 50 million buttons, uh, you cannot help but go and push every single one of them. <laughs> Just to see if something's gonna happen. <laughs> We also had a lot of other, uh, had a lot of other ships in this movie, uh, which was really fun. Some some other big ships and some little ships that we got to really turn around. It was uh, my favorite in this one was watching. <laughs> I'll be in the chair. I'll see. I'll see John and Anton, and they are doing they are doing hand calisthenics. <laughs> <laughs> they are swiping shit. <laughs> Levers. They're finding all sorts of stuff to do with this thing. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, I'm really glad they know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. There he is, there's a word to <laughs> That is actually how weird he is. <laughs> uh, Chris, Kirk is always learning something from Spock. Spock has always been like a big brother to him. What is the relationship like, your relationship with a much younger Chekhov? Well, I think I, <coughs> pardon me, I think that's exactly it. Is that um, that is very interesting? I've really thought about it. The, what's nice about our relationship is that there's a parody there that, that two people that are in the same kind of boat and coming from a similar spot. And with Anton in this film, he uh, Anton has uh, in Chekhov. There's a clarity to him. He likes his job. He likes um, he likes the group he's with. Uh, and he's not kind of encumbered by the same BS that the rest of us are. And, um, there's some, there's some very, there's, there's a buddy comedy aspect to what we end up doing that I think people will enjoy. Awesome. Um, and the teleprompter's logo on blank. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, guys, I really appreciate you taking time to answer questions from fans, from Twitter, from me. Please give these guys a hand. person, Scott Vance. Come on. Okay, listen. Yeah. Now. Okay. Wait, just, just 
right, just to show you how the Star Trek runs with me. Yeah. All right, okay. I first discovered Star Trek in 1974. The episode was Mirror Mirror. Yes. What? That was a great episode, ladies and gentlemen. But a month until my 13th birthday, on November 21st, 1981, you know, do the math, okay? But I had a Star Trek bar mitzvah. <laughs> doesn't like Spock during a transporter malfunction on his head. Look, they got it half right, and, and I just gotta thank my parents, my family, for supporting my obsession. <laughs> or I would not be here right now talking to you and being here to celebrate. How cool that we are all going to the premiere of Star Trek Live! Shout out the answer, you will be disqualified. But let's start with the first question Are you ready? And you will get prizes. Woo! Yeah. Right. First question. First question is this <laughs> On Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> Who was 
the first captain of the Starship Enterprise. Oh. Scott, over here. Over here. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Scott. Okay. Hey. Yes. Yes. No. No, it's not quite. It's not quite. Oh my god, I want to see the one so bad. Wait there. Yes. Wait, wait, wait for the microphone. 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 Wait for the Run and organized by Enoch Kilwer. Oh, 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 huh? oh, oh, In the original series episode, city. The City, oh, on the edge of forever, which is the Citizen Kane of Star Trek episodes. <laughs> 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 Citizen Kane. Who knows? Okay, what is the name of the humble shelter? Yes, you. It was the Sixth Street Mission. That's wrong. Oh. That's wrong. Okay, hey, wait, this guy, this guy. Yes, you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> He's had his Wheaties today. 21st Street Mission. That is 